the swarmers. Okay. The swarmers are swarming at this time, but let's go back to Luke chapter 17. Let's ask a word of wisdom from our Father. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Luke chapter 17. And 17 reads, starting with verse 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, pay attention to who he's talking about, the Pharisees. When the king, uh, and uh, they demanded the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. And he answered them and he said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. What, what that means is um, you're not gonna be able to see it. What I want you to do is I want you to be a watchman and I want you to be able to see it. Because they're not going to be able to, it comes in gradually and it can slip up on you if you're not careful. So, therefore, that's what he's telling them. How are you fixed today? Are you a watchman? Do you see what's happening in this world? Do you fit that with prophecy? Of course you do. But let's nail it a little better today, if we may. Verse 21. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. In other words, the Holy Spirit is within us and, and we are in him. And we know and can tell when that kingdom comes. We know that there's a lot must take place. So then he turns, after talking to the Pharisees, he turns to the disciples and he says to them, verse 20, and he said unto the disciples, the days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. In other words, Maybe it's going to be a little uh, parse. You're going to have some times where you've got to be a watchman. You've got to observe. And they shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them nor follow them. Now that's the key, okay? Don't, when, when somebody, when you're still in a flesh body and somebody tells you that Christ is in the desert or Jerusalem or somewhere, it's a bunch of malarkey, okay? It's not going to happen don't go for as the lightning that lightning out of one part under the heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven so shall also the son of man be in this day just as sure as the sun comes up in the morning and as sure as it goes down at night he's coming but the point is will you recognize it will you recognize what's happening in the world at that time to pinpoint and to, to be on guard. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. It's getting there. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it, it also be in the days of the Son of Man. For 27, they did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. In other words, the fallen angels were here. They're gonna be again. Now, there are many things that must happen before those fallen angels are here, though. And you gotta be, you gotta be set and tuned in and forewarned before even this time comes, but it shall come. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat and they drank, and they bought and they sold, they planted, they builded. This planted means um, they planted false doctrine. And boy, there's a lot of that goes on today. Chapter by chapter, verse by verse, keep yourself informed. Then you will not be deceived. But the same day Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. In other words, God gets around to business. There was a lot of perverted things taking place in Sodom and Gomorrah. It's gonna be just like that again. Well, you know, pay attention. Look around you. And don't think God doesn't take care of business. He does, okay? Even thus, verse 30, even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he, shall, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. 
and he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. You're not going to need it. That means the end is here. But that's why you have to keep informed on the steps and the stages that lead up to this so that you know exactly what's happening and what's uh, going on. Remember Lot's wife, 32. What did she do? 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. And that means um, if you try to go along with the flow instead of remaining with Christ, you're going to lose your soul. You can't go with the crowd. You've got to stay with Christ. Verse 34, I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, and one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. And all, there's not a person in this room probably that hasn't heard some preacher say, and I want to be that first one taken. Taken by Antichrist? What did Christ say back in a prior verse? If they tell you, don't go. Listen to him. Don't go. Why? Because it's the false Christ. It's false doctrine. You don't need that. Don't be deceived. You want to lose your soul uh, in the first resurrection? That's a good way to do it. I don't really want to stick around for the second. I want to take part in that first one. Uh, two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Likewise, 36, two men shall be in the field. One shall be taken and the other left. A lot of people are going to be deceived. Well, false doctrine. You don't have to study God's word, the preacher says, because you're going to be gone. Isn't it wonderful? It's a wonderful lie, all right. False doctrine soothsayers will get you in much trouble. You want to listen to Almighty God and what he has to say. 37, and they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Where was Christ crucified? Jerusalem. That's where Satan will sit as the false Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 uh, locks that in. That needs not be discussed. Read the very next verse. What does it say? Chapter 18. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, meaning on this subject. Well, what's the subject? The return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. You don't want, every time you see something that's a little irregular or out of line, don't, don't fall into it. Don't faint. But pray. Be, have your faith in Christ and know when you're with him, you're a victor. You got it made. You're with him. So therefore, uh, as it is, don't faint saying, there was as in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded men. I'm going to read right on through this. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. I got trouble. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said unto himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man. I, don't, I could care less about any of that. Yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. She's driving me nuts. She's pestering me. So just to get rid of her, I'm going to give her her way. Now that was done by a judge. We have a judge, okay? It's Almighty God. But this judge, even a, a poor judge that doesn't love God, is going to do ultimately what's right just so it doesn't whine because the woman was persistent and that's what you want to be as persistent in your prayer that you as a watchman are informed concerning all the events that are transpiring so you can keep up that's very important that's what the subject is here is the return of Jesus Christ that's what we're all looking for Verse 6, And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect? Do you think God wouldn't be better to his own elect than that fake judge? 
which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. This is tied directly to the fifth seal and the fifth trump. The people that do cry, when is it going to be, Father? Avenge us. Look what they're doing to us. Look at the world. Look at our nation. Verse 8. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. I don't know. You bet he's going to. Why? Because he has got his own elect. And his elect will always stay with him. But be persistent in searching those scriptures in knowing exactly what time of the day it is. Now, I happen to know that we're approximately 42 years into the fifth seal. 42 years into it, and about two years ago, we had a raiser of taxes on the 40th year generation. And working on the third one, so pay attention. We're in critical times as far as prophecy is concerned. And, and uh, so it is that our Father would uh, help us and let us know. Let's go to Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 6, the unveiling, that's what the word revelation means. And it means God wants to unveil the truth to you whereby you can ascertain the time of day it is, when the end shall be, and what it is he would have you do. So we read in that, um, in that verse, uh, let's see, uh, we'll go with um, verse 9. And what does it read? We're Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, and we're in the fifth seal. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for a testimony which they held. Now, where were these? Well, we buried them out here in the hole in the ground. No, you didn't. They're with him. You may have buried their flesh corcus, but their soul is with Almighty God, and they're in their spiritual body, and they're talking to him. They're saying, how long? When are you going to take this back out on those people? 10 and they, verse um, 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants, that's you, their fellow servants, and also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. This is kind of a mistranslation. Who is Satan? He's death. Where are God's elect delivered up to? To death. That is to say, Satan. For what purpose? For a witness. To witness to Almighty God, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through them. And I beheld when he had opened, and th then he opens the sixth seal. Now, um, how precious it is that our Father lets us know all things when it's time. But to keep up with the time, we must be vigilant, we must observe, and in observing, no one understand. Go with me now to the ninth chapter of the great book of Revelation. And here we have the fifth trump. Again, we are approximately 42 years into this. That's a generation. It's coming up time. So be alert. Chapter 9, verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven upon the earth, and to him was given a key to the bottomless pit. That's a pit of lies. It's a snake pit of deception. It's a pit for old serpent himself. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. As the smoke of a great furnace, that's lies and deception just spewing forth, and the world loves it. Hook, line, and sinker, they take it. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit, by the lies, the darkness of Satan. And there came out of the smoke locust. Did you hear what I said? There came out of the smoke locust upon the earth, and upon them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. Now, let's have a little Hebrew lesson here. 
What is the word locust in the Hebrew tongue? It's arbe. Arbe. Well, now, what is the word Arabian or Arab in the Hebrew tongue? Arbe. Well, let me see. If both of them are Arbe, then who is this army? Duh, well, let's see a minute. If the locust are Arabs or Arabians, then they're kind of swarming, aren't they? Kind of swarming all over the world, aren't they? Pay attention. Do your homework. Prove it out. The swarming has begun. It is now with us. And Arabi is Arabian, and Arabi is the word locust, as it is utilized in the book of Joel, which we're going to be going there and look this army over, because you better pay attention. When the swarming is started, things follow. Do you know what they are? I don't know. You're a watchman. He asked the Pharisees, do you know? You won't see it. Well, you're going to. So kind of let that be a type, or let it at least as a watchman put you on guard as to what this army is that's flowing out of there. You know, you know what the locust, the etymology of the word is, is the magnitude of the number. They repeat themselves so much. Okay. You see one, if you've ever seen a herd of grasshoppers, you'll, you'll know why it was so well taken. They swarm. Verse 4, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Well, what's the seal of God in your forehead? We just read it, the fifth seal. The fifth seal told you what was happening. This fifth trunk lets you know exactly what's happening. It is the swarm. But know this, the swarm is only one stage of the locust. Are you familiar with the other stages? Think about it. You're a watchman. Watch. If you have the seal of God in your forehead, they can't bother you. Why? That's God's orders. But can you imagine a group of Arabi? not bothering grass or vegetation, that's impossible. That's what they feed on. Well then, well, what do you mean, Pastor? I mean, we're not talking about insects. That's what I mean. We're talking about men. We're talking about an army. That's what we're talking about. But again, what, let that be a comfort to you. You can't touch those that have the seal of God in their forehead. Well, why couldn't you? It's really common sense, because they know better. They're not going to go. They're not going to be taken. They're too intelligent for that. They're watchmen, and they have been informed. Verse 5, And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. You've all heard my teaching on this. You know that a scorpion doesn't have a stomach, that he zaps the, the victim, and the victim's stomach, the victim's skin becomes the scorpion's stomach. They will milk your back down, bone down to nothing with lies and um, dread. Uh, well, be careful, you might offend one. You know, that can get you in the grave, friend. You know, if somebody's trying to kill you and you don't want to offend them, you don't have much self-defense up, partner, and you're in a heap of hurt. So you want to pay attention and you want to know and understand what times we're in. But the very fact that you're armed with the truth of God's word, you know what tomorrow brings, make arrangements. Get set. Know and understand. Protect your family. Verse 6, And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. <clears throat> Poor little lady went to church right down here. 
all of her life, sit on that pew praising Jesus and the preacher saying, you don't have to study God's word, you're going to be gone. And here she wakes up finding herself a good Christian woman worshiping Satan. She's too ashamed to face Christ. And she prays that she could just evaporate for shame. You don't ever want to go there. You don't ever want to be caught in that position. You know the truth. Hang to it. Don't sell your soul. You're not for sale. You belong to Almighty God. He owns your soul. Stick with it. Verse 7, and the shapes of the locusts, uh-oh, here we go. The shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared into battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns. Did you say there were crowns, or did it say as if it were crowns? I think it said as if they were crowns, like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. Why? Because they were men. Have you ever looked up the word crown? Do you know what a turban is? A turban goes, wraps around the head. It's a crown to those people. You know, in real life, only a king wears a crown. They all wear turbans. Every one of them has on a turban. And what about this horse business? Let's go back to the time of the Ottoman. Let's talk about two Arabian words. Pa and shah. P-A, pa, foot. And shah, ruler, pasha. The pasha, do you know what their sign was? It was a horse's tail. And you could tell the rank of the Pasha by how many horses tail from one up to three that he would have on a staff and in battle that would go before them. When they were encamped in military, that staff was stuck outside the tent of the Pasha. What that means is the foundation of the ruler is protected by this officer in the military. So. When you see these crowns, these turbans, and this isn't a fillet, just a little band around the head, it's where they really wrap her up, okay? And they all wear them. Now, I wonder who that could be. Let me think a moment. Well, verse 8. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. This hair of women also has, they, those horse tails, they were beautiful. And that hair signified their rank. And they were real gentle to their own people, but whoever they call a heathen, you in a heap of hurt. You're due to die, in other words, okay? Let's just be, let's keep it like it is. And, and we cannot, let me say quickly, we cannot fit all people into one mold. There's only the extreme sect that fits the Paisha and the Wahhabi. Lebanon, when you look around us today, you see Tunisia, Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, you see um, uh, Yemen. What are they doing? They're swarming. Well, they want liberty. They want what? They want liberty. They want peace. Well, when they cry peace, 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 well, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to, when you hear wars, you don't worry a whole lot. But when the whole world clamors peace, you better be careful because that's the opposite of wars and rumors of wars. So just a few tidbits here throwing in so that we can help us reconnoiter and think. With the teeth of lions, that's like sending little, that, that's vicious. 
A lion take the, you know, a canine crushes off the the um, vascular system and kills its uh, prey that way. A lion rips and tears. I mean, they'll blow up little kids. They, they don't. They're not uh, if, if to accomplish their purpose. They don't care. The teeth of lions would be a treat to what some of the things they do. Nine, and they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron. You don't see any jewels there serving Almighty God like the priest of, of, of Almighty God or the 12 tribes. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots and many horses running to battle. You need to listen to the sounds, beloved, all around the world at this time. Listen to them. What do they chant? What do they say? And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. Their power was to help men, not to hurt men. And certainly they will, unless you have the seal of God in your forehead. And they had a king over them, who, uh, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Ababdon, that's the destroyer. And, but in the Greek tongue, hath his name Apollyon. And both of them meaning destroyer. Gives it to you in two languages so you can't go wrong. How precious God's word is, that he gives us truth and understanding, that he gives us wisdom whereby we can see and understand. That's why he gave us seven seals, seven trumps, and seven vials. In the last two Passovers, we've covered the third and the fourth. This Passover, it's the fifth. And the deadly wound will happen before we finish this day. Then not happen, but you'll learn of it. Just about exactly how it takes place, so that you're forewarned. We'll discuss that this evening. But certainly having that knowledge protects you where in ignorance you wade right into the fray, not knowing any better. Following the 12th Iman, anyone? I hope not. You would be in the wrong pasture, and it would be bad, bad news. Now, we're going to go, excuse my back, we're going to go to the book of Joel. You might turn there, right after Hosea, Daniel and Hosea. Let's take Joel chapter 1 and verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Petuliel, which is to say, Joel is um, to, whom Yahav, to whom Yahweh is God. So th this is straight following our father Yahweh. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear all ye inhabitants of the land. Hath this been in your days, even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Listen carefully. That which the palmer worm hath left hath the locust eaten. That's Arabe, Arab, Arabian, locust. And that which the locust hath left hath the canker worm eaten, and that which the canker worm hath left hath the caterpillar eaten. These are four stages. You better know what they are. We're in the swarmer stage now, which is what? Well, let's break this down into English, okay? Let's English Englishize it here. And you would have this riddle. You with companion Bibles, you've already got it worked out for you. The Norse remnant, that's the first stage. The swarmers eat. The swarmers are the locusts. The swarmers remnant, the devourer eats. The devourer's remnant, the consumer eats. 
Again, we're in the stage of the swarmer. The devourer is coming. Pay attention to prophecy and pay attention to times. Skip to chapter 2, verse 1. What are you supposed to do? Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. That's how you can tell. Swarming is a good aspect. Well, is it a type or is it the real thing? We don't know. But I guarantee you in all my years of teaching, I've never seen a stronger type. So my advice is watch, watchman, watch. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong locust. There hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations, the swarm. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth, and the land is as a garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. Uh, their appear the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. There we go again. And as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire, they devour the stubble, as a strong people set it in battle array. And so they are, and so they march. But they climb into houses, right into your living room if you'll let them, if you just turn on the boob tube and watch. Okay. But don't listen necessarily to what's said. Listen to the Word of God and decipher what is truth and what is fiction for your living in that time. Now, uh, I want to skip all the way down to the 17th verse because all of you are familiar with this. We're just synchronizing our watches. 17, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore shall they, should they uh, say among the people, Where is their God? That is our heavenly Father, Yahweh, the creator of all things. He is with you. And when he is with you, you are a victor every time. You are an overcomer. And in overcoming, God is with you. You can't go wrong. What, what did God order when he let them out of the pit, gave them that freedom to swarm? What did he say? He said, you cannot touch those that have the seal of God in their forehead. So I, I don't want to see any of God's children sweating bullets, all right? Because you got nothing to sweat about as long as you use this and keep it loaded with the seal of God. Then you're in good shape. Then will the Lord, 18, be jealous of his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and you shall be satisfied therewith and I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. You're not going to be stupid enough to take all your corn for cattle and people and melt it down into alcohol, okay. gasoline, petrol. You're going to drill your own. Okay. You're going to have your own. And God might even bring us a different power than we ever knew existed. He will. Twenty. I will remove far off from you the northern army, that's the locust, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, that's the desert, with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the uttermost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. The locust won't be alone in the other uh, stages. We will have Esau and, and uh, a few men of the East along with them to keep them company. So be prepared for that. Fear not, O land, and be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. That's your salvation, that your Father let you know beforehand what's transpiring. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. 
for the tree beareth her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. People might try to break this nation. People might try to destroy this nation. It will revive and it will come back stronger than other uh, ever. And God will establish his throne, heavenly throne on earth, and it shall be forever and ever. Be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately. That is to say, the beginning of truth, to know who you are. He gave that to you in a moderate way that you could absorb it, you could understand it. It simplified the teachings of Almighty God, whereby you could absorb it. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter in the first. Notice the word month is added. It means the latter is going to be as satisfying as was the first. He's giving us that latter rain now, the truth, the swarm, the knowledge, the wisdom. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust, Arbi, hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. You'll notice here that the first is last. Why would he do that? Well, we've got a little more gnawing going to take place, like on the Twin Towers and so forth. A little more gnawing, get ready for it. Know your stages. And note here they're reversed. 26, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. You're always going to be happy that you served him, that he touches you, gives you truth and knowledge, provides for you. Why? Because you love him. And when you love him, he loves you. He takes care of his own. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. And two times for emphasis. And it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see vision. Uh-oh. We've offended the preachers now. How did we do that? Well, women are not supposed to say anything. And you know, any preacher that thinks he could keep women quiet is a fool. <laughs> you cannot keep women quiet. It won't happen. Okay. So both sons and daughters, don't throw anything, ladies. I'm on your side. I'm, I'm, I've always been partial to women over men. It just happens that way, okay? But both speak. But now a lot of preachers have trouble with that. It would, you would think that in their minds they thought women were smarter than they were. And they had to keep them down, okay? Well, God knows better. God's going to use both sons and daughters. Um, verse 29, and also upon the servants and upon thine handmaids. There's women again. In those days will I pour out my spirit. That's when you're delivered up before the spirit's Messiah so the whole world can hear truth. And I will show wonders in the heaven and the earth, blood and fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. With deception and lies, don't get into it. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall deliverance be deliverance, as the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. That remnant is God's elect. That remnant has ears to hear and eyes to see. Now, as I said, don't paint with a brush too wide. There is only one sect that we're zeroing in on here and that God zeroes in on. That's those that would offend, those that have an ill purpose, 
for in and among all those, we have those that are looking for liberty and peace. And that in itself is one of the stages of the locus, which is the opposite sign of the latter rain, which brings the Lord one step closer. So there you have it. And watch the current events like never before. You are a watchman, and it is your time to watch. You are in that stage, which is the second stage, swarmers. If we were to title this lecture, it would be titled Swarmers, for they are swarming. And you know something? When you try to understand from the world, well, what is it they want? Why, why are they all doing this at the same time? You better look up, and you better know that our Father is still on the throne. And there is a movement. It didn't just happen by accident that all those nations flared up at one time. Okay. There is an evil engineering in this world. Watch, watchmen. It's late in the day. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for the privilege of being allowed to serve you. Thank you, Father, for these, and let them be a blessing to all they come in contact with. We ask it in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting late in the game. You need to know what the Mark of the Beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the Mark of the Beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the Mark of the Beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. God told us what we could eat and be healthy. And that's what you want to do. You can break it down basically by saying, don't eat scavengers. Only eat animals that live from things uh, growing from the earth. Uh, example, a cow. Grass comes from the earth. Cow eats grass. It, you're, you're, uh, and has a, has a um, split hoof and chews its could. So it fits all the qualifications. It's good for you. Okay, as long as you do it in moderation. But, uh, but then uh, many will confuse um, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, uh, that, that um, God said it was okay that all animals were good. He said all animals are good, but in verse 3, what does it say? Don't let anyone judge you in marriage or in food. That is to say, those things that God created to be received. Do you understand that? That God created to be received. He did not create scavengers to be received for food. But they are still good animals. Why? Because they cleanse the earth. And so it is. The rituals, which like blood sacrifice is, is um, no longer, it was nailed to the cross. Colossians chapter 2 tells you what was nailed to the cross and that Christ became. Example, uh, how do you worship Passover anymore? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 tells you Christ became our Passover, our high Sabbath, our high holy day. Uh, and in Matthew 5, it would tell you Christ himself saying, I don't change one jot, or one tittle of the law. And so it is. Sacrifices, done away with. Beverly from North Carolina. Could you help me understand, let's see what you got. Understand in Matthew 21, 28, where those two sons answered their father about going to work in the vineyard. 
Uh, we said the first also, but it sounds like Jesus said we were wrong. Well, it, it's the one that actually produced fruit. Which one produced fruit? One said he wasn't going, and then changed his mind and went, and he did the Father's work. And the other one said, yeah, I, I'll go, but he never quite got around to it. He never went. He's a louse, okay? It's the person that ultimately does God's work, gets it done. You've got to produce fruit or God's not happy. Uh, Clarence from Florida. My question, some that, um, some that believe in the rapture say that the tribulation is not for Christians or the church, but for Israel. Is this true? Well, uh, um, you know what? First, you'd have to be wise enough to know the house of Judah and the house of Israel are two separate houses. And you would have to know that the house of Israel were the ten tribes that went north over the Caucasus Mountains, were later called Caucasians, that settled Europe, many later coming to Canada and America, and they are Christian, the house of Israel is. And so uh, you're kind of doing double talk but you're showing lack of knowledge to not know the difference between the house of Judah and the house of Israel. That's extremely important. You cannot really understand God's word without understanding that simple fact that they are two separate houses. And to be waiting for your answer and watching. Well, you've got it. The tribulation, as you read Mark 10, is, it's no step for a stepper. Because as it is written in Luke 21, they can't harm a hair on your head. The false Christ is coming playing Jesus. In other words, he can't go around beheading people or harming people, uh, or, or he would be proved a fake real easy. But he's really working with love, prosperity, and peace. And your peace sneaks are already lined up and ready to accept him. They'll do anything under the name of peace. Just give me peace, okay? Doesn't matter their character, their, what they stand for uh, can go out the window as long as you'll just talk peace to them. Uh, peace comes at a price because there's a true peace and there's a false uh, peace. Uh, Satan will bring peace, all right. That's how he comes in, prosperously and peaceably, peaceably. And many people will be deceived by that very action. How sad that is for people to not know the simplicity in which Christ taught in Mark 13 of exactly how it's going down. Uh, Luella from Kentucky. Um, I would like to know about the Bride of Christ. I have heard lots of things. Is the Bride of Christ a church building? So some go to. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't God look real funny married to a chunk of wood or brick? I don't think so. That's there's a building does not make a church. The people do. Okay, is the bride the Christian people who believe and then say they, or and, and say they have or are then saved? Is the bride the people who have been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and also believe? Some just uh, go get wet. Well, that's true, too. What about the people in nursing homes that can't go to church? This is what brought me to this question. It's whether they believe or not. If they believe and have faith, you don't have to go to a church building. I, I have, well, I won't go in. Well, I will. No. One of, the, one of the best men I've ever met in my life and as a neighbor and doing business with. As far as I know, never joined a church, never went inside a church, but he lived a Christian life that was just all near perfect. And so the, it's, uh, and in many of the buildings, they never teach God's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse anyway. You're not gonna learn anything even going to a building, but it's the people. They're God's children, and how God does love his children. Uh, he, you know something? He died for them. Emmanuel, God with us on that cross. 
That's how much he loves them. And if you want to really know who the bride is, read Matthew chapter 25. There was 10 people almost made it. I mean, they were right up to the 11th hour. Five of them were playing around and they didn't have enough oil in their lamp, which means they didn't have enough truth from God's word because they weren't studying chapter by chapter and verse by verse. And they were pulled off by the false Christ at the last minute. And naturally, Christ said, get out of my sight. I don't know you. They didn't make it because the false Christ deceived them. The bride of Christ is those that know the difference between the fake and the true Christ. Robert from Illinois. My question, if I dislike or just hate someone, is this the same as judging even though in my mind I am justified in disliking them. Um, that's spiritual discernment, Robert. A person, uh, a person doesn't, uh, if someone is, uh, when you say that, when, when you say that you are justified in disliking them, you have a reason. That spiritual discernment says stay away from them. As a matter of fact, it is written in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, beginning with verse 6, even if it's a brother, that's one born of the womb of Israel, or your family, if, if they finally just get to the point you can't get along with them, set them to one side. It tells you exactly, according to God's law, how to handle the situation. You don't have to treat them as an enemy, but braid them down right real good and don't have anything to do with them necessarily. Don't feed them especially or enable them. You can read it for yourself, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, beginning with verse 6. Spiritual discernment is not judging. Don't, once you've been burned, don't be burned again. Okay. <laughs> Getting burned again, first time you're burned, you can say, shame on you. But the second time you're burned by the same person, shame on me. Okay. Richard from Ohio. Is chicken a clean food to eat? Well, what did, when, when our people wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, what did God send them to eat? Number one, he sent angels food, according to the great book of Psalms, and that was manna, bread from heaven. But what else did he send? What did God send besides manna to the children in the wilderness? He sent quail. Quail is poultry. They're a clean animal. And, and um, uh, God sent them as food to sustain, along with angels' food, the children of Israel. Chicken, um, it's okay. Aaron, you know, what you feed people, uh, animals is what counts, too. Aaron from Arkansas. Will Satan and the Nephilim be able to read minds or raise the dead to try and fool God's people? Can they recall sins for the past? No, no, it's erased. When God erases something, it is erased. But uh, the fallen angels nor Satan can read minds. Only God is, as it's written in the Greek, cardio nor. He knows your heart. Okay? You don't have to even say it. He knows what you're thinking even. That's why you don't ever, ever want to try to con God or put something over on him. You're kidding yourself. You're making a fool of yourself if you ever try to even. Why? Because he knows what you're thinking. And uh, so uh, Satan, he cannot read minds. Only God can give life. Satan can't raise anyone from the dead. However, he is subtle a trickster, and can make things seem like what they're not. So that, too, you have to be careful of. The hand is quicker than the eye. Your eye better be quicker than the hand. You better be wiser than the serpent, is what I'm saying. Susan from Missouri, Pastor Murray, will the two witnesses make themselves known by their teaching prior to the arrivals of the Antichrist? The Antichrist originally was given 42 months. Revelation 13. The, <clears throat> the uh, two witnesses were given 1,260 days. That's 
Both of those are three and a half years. One solar, because the two witnesses are children of light. 42 moons, because Satan is of the darkness. Okay. But moons are not as long as days are. In other words, a 30-day month is longer than one moon. So that means, being the deduction being, that the two witnesses, even though the time has been shortened to five months, are still solar, and they will be here prior to the false Christ. It is their teachings and their ability that will cause you to recognize them. It's supernatural, basically. Uh, Greg from Oklahoma, talking about the behemoth in the book of Job, the Strong's reference 930 says that it is a hippo of the Ni or a Nile horse, uh, a water oxen, and said it's a dumb beast. Well, I think, you know, this is something, read the description in the book of Job in, in chapter 40 about the behemoth. It's got, a, uh, it's got a tail like a cedar tree. That I mean, that thing, it's got a tail 30 to 60 feet long. How long is a hippopotamus's uh, tail? It's like a little pig's tail, okay? It won't work, so you know that's wrong, and I'm out of time. It was a dinosaur, and it's described perfectly. Out of being out of time, I want to say I love you because you enjoy studying God's Word chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Most of all, though, God loves you for it. It's his letter to you personally to help you be a better person. You make his day when you do that. When you make his day, he's going to make yours. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless God. He will always bless you. Now, most important, though, you listen to me, listen good. Stay in his word. Every day in his word is a good day, even with trouble. You know why? Jesus is the living word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. The book of Peter, here we have two books, First and Second Peter, that, that are absolutely fascinating. That great old fisherman, telling us, leading us, directing us, guiding us, going into the depth, if you would, in that second book, into the three earth ages, giving the most accurate recorded account of the events that transpire and document that there are three earth ages, that there was one before this one, this one, and one to come. Peter, the great fisherman, which in his gentleness and his kindness brings us uh, two books, the books of Peter, that lead, guide, direct, even in your daily life, that teach and show you how to be happy, how to find that peace of mind, and to know yourself. The books of Peter, I know you're going to enjoy them.
Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. All right, good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. You know, one of the probably most asked questions that we receive has to do in or about tongues. So we're going to discuss tongues today. And being a teacher, there's only one way I know how to teach, and that is from the Word of 